Now let's move on quickly and I want to talk to you all about the power of a dream and the power of having big dreams. Leo Burnett has a quote which I think draws to emphasis what we're going to talk about today. And he said, when you reach for the stars, you may not quite get them, but you wouldn't come up with a handful of mud either. In many ways, there have been other similar expressions. Um, Some say, you know, shoot for the moon. Even if you miss, you land amongst the stars. The whole point of both quotes is just to encourage you And that is my hope for today, to encourage you to dream big. I don't know where you might be at today, mentally, you know, materially or physically or even spiritually. But everyone here has this unique ability that we call the imagination. It's one of our higher faculties. And the imagination is useful because it helps us do one of many things. It helps us to pre-play the future, although it hasn't happened yet. But it also helps us to replay the past. We can create the future. We can revise the past or replay the past. The main purpose of the imagination is to create new. And by that, what I simply mean is that in, in each and every one of us is this, what I call an innate desire and that is creativity and with your imagination you can dream you can fantasize you can idealize and the starting point to having a great dream or living a great life begins with giving yourself the permission the permission to choose the permission to decide the permission to dream i grew up uh, on the the guidance of, you know, really remarkable parents. And we were always given the freedom to dream. There was never any reference to where we were and using that as a a limiting factor. Whatever we could come up with, whatever our minds could conceive and believe, my parents encouraged it. And they said, yes, you can do it if you want it. And that was powerful because what it does is it gives you... um, self-confidence and it helps you develop and build your imagination every one of us has the ability to dream and you see when you dream in many ways you come as close as possible to what i call god likeness or the likeness of infinite intelligence or superconscious intelligence or universal intelligence Call it what you may, some call it God, some call it mind, some call it Allah, some call it Buddha, some call it nature, some call it life. I'm really agnostic as to what you use. The point I'll make is this. When we dream, we come as close as we can to God-likeness. That means that we become, in many ways, many creators. We are creating something out of nothing. The famous writer says that things that are we see we're created from things that were unseen and how is that possible well it's possible because you and i have the ability to think of a thought and we can impress that thought in our mind and we can get emotionally connected with that thought and if we do it long enough then we become loving towards that thought so an idea is simply a thought an ideal is an idea that you are in love with And so every dream begins with a thought. If you hold on to that thought and you ponder on it long enough um, with emotion, suddenly it might become a dream. I believe in big dreams. I believe you will fail in pursuit of that dream. And I think that should be exciting. Just the knowledge that you may not make it And the willingness to still give you your best shot, I think, is a beautiful experience. And part of the reason I say that you will not make it or that you will fail is simply because if your dreams um, are not big enough, 
unfortunately doesn't spark motivation or inspiration. If your dreams are not big enough, uh, it doesn't attract other people to your dreams. You know, Martin Luther King said, I have a dream. And his dream was so huge that a lot of people joined and said, we believe in that dream and we want to be part of the dream. So any dream that you can achieve on your own is not a big enough dream. One is not a complete number when it comes to creating remarkable um, changes in the world. You need more than one. You need more than one person. And uh, any dream that can be achieved by one alone is a dream that is too small. And so I'd like to recommend to you all to set a goal, create a dream um, so big that it excites you. And in many ways, it terrifies you as well. You sit up pondering how you can make it happen. It would excite you because of the passion and the hope it promises. It would ex excite you because of the inspiration and the feeling and how it makes you feel. And that's the most important thing. You see, uh, the various types of goals and dreams. There are some dreams that are tangible. There are some that are intangible. You need both. But more than anything, what you really want is the feeling of the dream. Everything we do in life, we do for a feeling. I'll say that again. Everything we do in life, we do for a feeling. We do things for how it will make us feel. Um, and so by choosing goals that make you feel good, by choosing dreams that make you feel great, that make others feel great, I think you're positioning yourself um, in what I believe is the pathway to the extraordinary life. Now, along the way, you will encounter obstacles and that is where the adventure begins but the most important thing is to set a goal so big that it excites you but it terrifies you now it terrifies you because you've never done it before if you have a dream that you know exactly how to achieve then it's not a dream if you have a dream or a goal that you know exactly what steps to take to make it a reality then it's not a dream because you've done it before, or you know how to do it. A big dream is one whereby all you can see is the first step. How you're going to get to the top of the mountain, you're uncertain about. But you know that you will get there. Even better still, in your imagination, you can see yourself on there. But you're not too worried about every single step all the way up to the mountain. All you know in your heart and what you see in your mind's eye is yourself on the mountaintop. That is a dream. So it would terrify you because of uncertainty. You're not knowing what lies ahead. And I like to use the analogy of a jungle. Imagine yourself in a jungle. From one side of the jungle, you're trying to get to the other side. Part of the great adventure of life is that we are all going through this, what I will call a jungle. And along the way, because we don't know where everything is in the jungle, we have to stop and ask for help. We have to ask people to join us. And the more we start to engage with other people, the more we start to grow this belief that we can make it safely across the jungle to the other side. On the other hand, if it's just you, um, you've got no one looking out for you or watching your back. So part of the reason why the dream might terrify you if it's big enough is because of uncertainty. You've never done it before. And therefore, the feeling of fear will creep in. Dreams, in many ways, come to you as desires. They come to you, but in what I believe is a remarkable... Um, experience, dreams are simply nature's way of informing you that you can achieve what you've seen. Now, if you can see it in your mind's eye, I can promise you, you can hold it in your hand. You can touch it, you can feel it, you can have it. My first question when people say to me, I have a dream, my, my question is always the same. I say, can you see it? Because here was the question given to an ancient 
writer. The statement was, stand up and look. As far as your eyes can see, I've given that to you. In the same way, if you can see it in your mind's eye, you can hold it in your hand. It's a sign. It's nature's way of saying that it's possible. It's possible. However, you then have to play your part of making it a reality. So the most important question when you say, I have a dream, is not what is the dream. It's not how am I going to achieve it. That is all irrelevant at the start. The most important thing you must ask, the most important question you must ask yourself is, can I see it? If the answer is yes, it means you can achieve it. You see, when you see with your eyes, we call it sight. Sight is a function of using your eyes. However, when you see with your mind's eye, when you see with through your imagination, we call it vision. And infinite intelligence speaks to us through dreams and visions. So whenever you have a dream that you can see, or a vision that you can see, it's a sign that is already yours. What it now requires is dedication, commitment, hard work, faith, the willingness to try, persistence, perseverance, grit, um, sacrifice. But as long as you can see it, it's already yours. And so I would recommend you to try a few things. Set a goal so big that it excites you, but it terrifies you as well. But here is what's interesting. If you have the feeling of fear or uncertainty, I have a reverse recommendation to make. You want to set a goal that is worthy of you failing for. Many of us actually set goals that are not worthy of us. We start off by asking the question, um, I want a new car. But that's okay, there's nothing wrong with wanting a new car. But the mistake most people make is they ask themselves the question, do I deserve it? Which I think is a very sad question. Some people say, I want a new house. And they look at the house and they say, it's too expensive, I don't deserve it. Which I think is a shame. Look at you, the highest form of creation. You've got everything within you. Everything in eternity exists within you. All of the wisdom, infinite intelligence, boundless love, supernatural understanding, unlimited power, unlimited potentiality, all in you. And you say, I don't deserve it. What a shame. What a sad comment to make. You can be, you can have anything, and you can do anything that you want. The most important thing is recognizing who you are and who is in you. But if you must, I like to encourage people to think about choosing dreams and goals that are worth failing for. See, at the end of the day, um, at the end of our lives, whatever we've done with our life will represent what we exchanged our lives for. Now think about this, every day you wake up in the morning and you go to work or maybe you go to school or maybe you just do nothing, maybe you surf, um, whatever you do. But everything you do during the day represents what you exchange in your life for. So the question should never be, am I deserving of this relationship? Am I deserving of this car? Am I deserving of this home? Am I deserving of this goal? No. Reverse the question because greatness resides within you. The genius is within. The question should be, is the goal, is the dream worthy of me? The moment you can ask yourself that question, life changes for you because you see what it means now is you will begin to set goals that are worth failing for. You see, the mistake most people make is they don't understand what failure is. We've given failure a really bad name. And I think it's tragic. I think it's sad. Success is a very poor teacher. All of what I've learned through life, I've learned predominantly from failures. My failures 
other people's failures because failure is a better teacher than success. Both failure and success are like two opposite ends of a coin. Every coin has three sides. You have the heads, you have the tail, you have the edge. True intelligence comes in learning and being able to stand on the edge so that you can look at both sides of the coin and use the lessons being provided from both experiences. Um, and if you can do that, and if you can stand on the edge, you then get to see failure for what it is. It's simply what I call practice shots. It's feedback. It's uh, nature's way of saying, you've done well, but you need to course correct. You're not there yet. It's nature's way of saying, uh, you forgot something important. It's nature's way of saying, listen, you need to grow. Nature's way of saying, hold on, learn a little bit more. You're not ready yet. And the more we welcome failure, we realize actually that we're swinging towards the pendulum of failure. And just like a pendulum, it swings both ways. The mistake most people make, and this is what I've done for so many years, and sometimes I still do, is I'm trying to be successful. Now think about this. What did... Tom Watson say, he said, if you want to be successful, double your rates of failure. In other words, you cannot swing on the pendulum of success towards success, but you can swing towards failure. And if you swing harder towards failure, the pendulum swings to the other side because it's just the motion. And as you swing harder towards failure, what you find is it pushes you towards success. So, if you want to be successful in achieving your dreams and goals, welcome failure. But do me a favor. Rename the word failure. Call it whatever you want to call it. Um, practice shots, feedback, um, learning experiences. The other day I was having a conversation with someone and they asked me, how has my month been? And I've been learning every day about the power of words and what to say and what not to say. I've been learning that my words um, are creative. In the past, I would have said I've had a really difficult year or difficult month or it's been bad or not too good. Um, nowadays, I use the word character building. So I said, well, I've had a really, really interesting character building month. Now, this is interesting. I said that because I believe it to be true. The reason I believe it to be true is because I know that in the journey um, through the month that I'd been developing a lot more um, skills and attitudes that I never had. But this is why, where it got really interesting. I realized that you're going to have good times and you're going to have bad times in life. But you're not going to know which is which at the moment that it's happening. So you have to learn, like Steve Jobs said, that you cannot connect the dots looking forward, that you have to connect the dots looking backwards, but you must trust that they will connect. So at the moment I'm having this character building moment, I cannot say it's a bad moment or a bad month, because who knows, in six months, I might look back and say that was the most important piece of the puzzle, because if I hadn't developed the skills and the virtues and the attitude, I wouldn't have achieved what I have now. So character building was a terminology that I, I coined and phrased as a way of reframing my experiences. And so you have to learn how to reframe and rename the word failure. Now let's go back to dreams as I uh, bring this to a close. In each and every one of us is a dreamer. And um, the ability to dream is one that you should develop and welcome. Some call it fantasy. I'm going to conclude by sharing with you what I believe is one of my most significant philosophies about life. I call this part of my personal truths. When you dream, people say you're daydreaming, that you're fantasizing that you're hurting yourself because depending on who you are and what you want, it might be far-fetched. I'm going to share with you 
what I call the law of life. And that law is called assumption. The law of assumption. Many of us are familiar with the law of attraction. The law of attraction is a secondary law. You don't use the law of attraction if law of attraction works. Once you've gone past the first condition for attracting what you want. So the law of attraction is nature's gift back to you. What you need to activate the law of attraction is something called the law of assumption. And the law of assumption works with the law of belief. The law of belief is important. Then you must have the law of expectation. Expectation comes before attraction. But the most significant law when it comes to creating dreams and achieving your dreams is something called the law of attraction. Apologies, something called the law of assumption. Now, what is the law of assumption? Well, in a very simple way, I'll explain it in this regard. Whatever your dream might be, if you can see it in your mind's eye, if you're willing to assume that that dream has already occurred, if you're willing with belief and faith to go to the end of that dream. In other words, the realized dream. If you can go in your mind's eye and emotionally live in that feeling of your wish fulfilled and your dream achieved, at the point that you do that and you deal with emotion and you represent your world to you as though it were already real, at that point, you're assuming that your dream has been fulfilled. But you're not just, you know, seeing the dream. You're living in the dream and representing your world to you based on your fulfilled desire. If you can do that in a way that you do not know, the law of assumption is activated. And... That which you believe in and you've held with faith that has, has been achieved in a way that you do not know. There will be a, what I call a series of events, activities, experiences, coincidences that come your way. Not based on what you've done, but based on the law manifesting itself. There will be a series of events that lead you mysteriously towards the fulfillment of that dream. It will be like a deja vu experience. Now, let me make a point. I'm not suggesting that you have to, um, once you've seen it in your mind's eye, you have to then try to know every single step to achieving it. No. What I'm simply saying is, if you believe in what you've seen, and you can hold on to that faith with expectation. If you can live in the feeling of your wish fulfilled, which is assumption, then the law of attraction is activated immediately. And in a way that you do not know, you'll be led through a series of events. Um, you'll be attracted to and you will attract people and circumstances that push you towards the fulfillment of your dream. And here is the point I'm going to make. It's all a dream. However, whatever you can see in your mind, if you can believe it to be true, if you can stay faithful to that feeling and that belief, it might take one year, it might take 10, it might take 20, but I can make you one promise. That if you stay faithful to that dream, that is already yours. You see, by thought, what we want is created. By feeling and expectation, it's sent to us, but we receive it by taking action. And that action is the assumptive action that is already achieved. When it will come, I cannot tell you. I cannot tell you because, you see, your responsibility is to sow the seed, create the dream, plant it in the soil of your mind. There is a season to sow and there is a season to reap. You cannot do both in the same season. 
you cannot do both at the same time. But so you must plant the seed and trust that at the right time, in the right season, you'll get a harvest. So I want you to dream big as you leave here now. I want you to dream big. I want you to dream beyond where you are now. I want you to always think about the question, is this dream or is what I'm doing worthy of me? Because you see, you're great. Genius lies within you. All the infinite intelligence and love and wisdom and power is within you. So you are the most important person in the universe. So a goal that you want has to be deserving of you, not the other way around. And make sure your dreams are big. Make sure they are grand. Make sure they are filled with colorful experiences. More than anything, make sure you choose goals that will give you good feelings. Because at the end of the day, it's not what you get that is the most important thing. It's who you become in pursuit of the dream. I often say this to friends. I say, well, think about life in this way. If you have a goal or if you have a dream, which is the most important? The destination. Many people often say yes. And I say, well, let me paint a picture for you. What about the start? When you begin, isn't that exciting? What about the journey? What about the destination? Three pieces of a puzzle. Most of us focus on the goal achievement, which is the destination. And I say there's nothing wrong with that. But from my experience, when you achieve a goal that big, what you find is that the joy that comes with the fulfillment of the dream is rarely as, as big as you expected it to be. The joy when you start the dream is significant. The joy when you complete the dream is significant. However, the journey and the joy that comes from the pursuit and the progressive movement towards that dream has the longest life. So I often encourage people to think about success as a journey. Not because it's simply a journey with no start or end. No, but because if it's a big dream, the journey is going to be longer. And in pursuit of that dream, you'll find that if you can stay faithful, because you're going to have joy in the pursuit of that goal, and because the journey is long, what an experience to have joy for such a long period of time. When the early astronauts, um, the Apollo team, came back from the moon, when they had achieved this remarkable feat of going to the moon, a lot of them went into depression when they came back. Why? Because the achievement of a goal brings completion. And because you are creative by nature, they had failed to do something interesting, which is to create a new dream. They didn't create a new dream before they completed the first. Um, and so they went into a shock. Some of them went into this shock of, is this all that life has to offer? When you've achieved a dream that big. So one of the things I want you to think about is, have many dreams, have big dreams and big goals and let them make you feel great. Get excited when you start because that's the start of creativity. Get excited in pursuit of the journey because that is the process. Get excited when you achieve the dream because that is completion. But before completion arrives, get hungry again and create another dream. And what you find is that by dreaming, we achieve something remarkable. We get to see what our true potential is. You see, the purpose in many ways of a dream is not for you to acquire things. The purpose is not for you to buy the car, buy the house, get married. No, sometimes the purpose is more important than the object. The purpose, in many cases, is to compel you to grow. And by growing, you then get to test this um, a philosophical statement that your potential is unlimited. Well, if my potential is unlimited, the only way I can find out what that unlimited status is, is to keep growing and keep developing dreams. And goals and dreams allow us to understand what we're capable of. 
So if you want to find happiness and joy and, and wealth and prosperity and good fortune, the most important thing you need is the ability to dream and the ability to convert that dream into goals and then to work towards the realization of that those goals. How do you do that? It's very simple. You start with a dream or a vision. You crystallize that dream or vision into written form. By doing that, you put in writing. You associate a timeline with that dream. You say, well, I want to achieve this dream in 10 years or two years or 50 years. So you're giving it some level of uh, a target. Once you've converted it into a goal, you convert the goal into a plan. As soon as you've converted it into a plan, what you find is the plan is the bridge that takes you from where you are to where you want to get to. The vision is where you're trying to get to. The purpose is why you want it. That's your reason. The goal is what you want. The plan is what you're going to do to get what you want. Now, you can't stop at a plan. You must convert that plan to a strategy. Your strategy is how you're going to achieve the plan. Once you have a strategy, you convert the strategy into what I call habits, daily activities that are simple. Now, what we're doing here is we're breaking the goal down. We're breaking the dream down into its smallest common denominator. As a habit or an activity, it means this is things you can do every day, a routine, um, a set of activities. Once you have those broken down into the smallest common denominator, then you have the key to success. Because the focus then is then less about this big dream. And then you're asking yourself simply, what do I have to do daily and consistently to ensure that I arrive at the place of my dreams? You see, life is hidden in a day. And a day is hidden in life. Your lifetime consists of what you're going to do tomorrow, what you have to do today, and what you've done in the past. So one of the key things to focus on is not really about this dream in the future. Focus on this dream today, and you doing what you have to do today. So you wake up every day with a checklist, a set of to-dos that tells you what you must do every day. What you do daily and consistently determines who you become permanently. The difference in men and women is based on what they do daily. I'll say that again. The difference in men and women lies in what they do daily. What you do daily and consistently determines who you become permanently. So what you do in a day over a period of 30 days becomes a month.